بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم ٹو پی ایم ڈی سی آن لائن لیکچر روم دس از شہریار قریشی ایسوسیٹ پروفیسر آف فزکس ڈی اسٹوڈنٹس ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس ویٹ اسٹون برج وچ از اے ویری امپورٹنٹ ٹاپک اٹ از ٹیکن فرام چیپٹر ٹویلو کرنٹ الیکٹریسٹی دس از ویری امپورٹنٹ ٹاپک which comes in board exams in section C and sometimes in short notes. Before going to discuss Wheatstone Bridge, first of all we have to understand how it works. Dear students, you can see in this diagram, here is a source. current i1 flows into the circuit and here are the combination of the resistors which are connected parallel r1 and r2 r3 and rx in this diagram this rx is the unknown resistance which we have to find out and you can clearly see that at this point the current from r1 and r2 would be i1 and the current flows through i3 and rx would be r2 this is very important to know that we have taken a bridge between these two combinations of parallel resistors and this bridge is the bridge of galvanometer which is connected between two points P1 and P2. Now why we have created such bridge between these two points? Actually, this is the basic concept of the Wheatstone bridge. Because at point P and point P1 and P2, if there is a potential difference, then current would flow through it. But if there is no potential difference between P1 and P2, there would be no current flows because current only flows when there is a potential difference. And if there is no potential difference between P1 and P2, then no current can flow through this bridge. And galvanometer connected to the bridge will show the deflection if there is any current. And if the potential at point P1 and point P2 is the same, then galvanometer will show zero deflection. So what we have to do is to arrange these resistors such that point P1 and P2 becomes at the same potential. So no current could flow through this bridge. Actually, Wheatstone bridge was designed by Charles, uh, Charles Wheatstone and it is used to find the unknown resistance of parallel combinations of the resistor by means of a bridge between them as you can see. Now we know that for parallel voltage is always the same and you can see from the diagram that R1 and R3 are parallel to each other. So voltage of uh, this section would be V1 and voltage of this section would be V3 with respect to R3. So V1 would be equal to V3 because both are in parallel and for parallel voltage is same. Therefore, V1 would be V is equal to IR according to Ohm's law. V1 would be I1 R1 because I1 flows through R1 and similarly I2 flows through R3. So we will get I1 R1 is equal to I2 R3. This would be our equation number 1. Now similarly, Look at the other side, 
here R2 and Rx are parallel to each other. So voltage would be the same for R2 and Rx. Therefore, I would say that V2 is equal to Vx because of parallel combination. And we can see I1 will flow through R2 and I2 will flow through Rx. Therefore, V2 would be equal to I1 R2, I1 R2 and Vx would be I2 Rx. This would be equation number 2. Now by dividing equation number 2 by equation number 1, we get this is equation number 2 and this is equation number 1. We will divide this equation number 1 by this equation number 2. Here we have done it. By cancelling I1 and I2 on the both sides, our result is R2 by R1 and Rx by R3. So we know that all we have to do is to equate this equation with respect to Rx. Then Rx would be R2 R3 divided by R1. This R3 is dividing here. It would be multiplied there. So R2 R3 divided by R1. By knowing the values of R1, R2 and R3, we can find the unknown resistance. Dear students, your today's assignment is what are the applications of Wheatstone Bridge? Also explain how do they works. For any queries or suggestions or questions, you can write your comments. Thank you very much.